Hello, the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture brings you Step Up to Kindergarten, a series of interactive videos designed to help kids and their grown-ups get ready for the big step into kindergarten. Sponsored by STCU. Hi, it's you. I'm so glad you're here with me today. My name is Allison and I'm an educator here at the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture. I'm really glad you're here because today we're going to learn all about shapes. You might know a little bit about shapes, but we're going to take a closer look and think about where we can find shapes and what their names are. All you need today is a partner, someone to talk to. It could be a grown up, it could be a stuffed animal, it could be a pet, just someone to share your thinking with. And you just need your big brain. Let's get started. So why do you think it's important that we learn about shapes? Well, shapes are everywhere. And when we know the names of th the shapes, it will help us be able to describe things. When we're talking or writing, we can use shape words to help people understand what we're thinking about or talking about. Also, shapes go together to make new shapes. Did you know two triangles can make a square? When we know the names of our shapes, it will help us in kindergarten. It will help people understand what we're thinking about, and it'll help us understand what others are thinking about. Our world is full of shapes. Shapes can be found outside, everywhere, in nature. Things like animals and plants and rocks, they all have their own special shape. Shapes are also used by people, people who make things. Some shapes have special functions. That means jobs. They do things better than other shapes. Let's take a closer look at some shapes. Do you know the name of this shape? This is a circle. Say, hi, circle. Circles are round. They have no corners and one long side that just goes around and around and around. Can you think of something that is shaped like a circle? Here are some things that I thought of. A coin, a button, or a tire. Can you think of a sweet treat that is in the shape of a circle? I can think of several. Uh, maybe you thought of a circle shaped donut. Yummy. Do you know the name of this shape? This is a square. Say, hi, square. Squares have four corners and four sides. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Squares are special because each one of their sides is the same length. Can you think of something that's shaped like a square? Here are some things I thought of. Some windows are squares. Some little holes are squares. This is called a grate. Most stamps are shaped like squares. Okay, can you think of a square shaped food? I'm thinking of one. This one's made out of milk, and mice love it too. A square-shaped slice of cheese. Nutritious and delicious. All right, let's think about this shape. Do you know the name of this shape? This is a triangle. Say, hi, triangle. Triangles are special 
because they have three corners and three sides. And the sides and corners can be all different lengths and angles. Let's count. One, two, three. If it has three corners and three sides, it must be a triangle. What things can you think of that are shaped like triangles? Here's what I thought of. Some signs are shaped like triangles. From far away, mountains might look like triangles. Roofs also frequently, many times, look like triangle shapes as well. Can you think of a lunchtime food that is usually cut into two triangles? A triangle-shaped sandwich. Convenient. Do you know the name of this shape? This is a rectangle. Say hi, rectangle. Rectangles are like squares, but they're a little different. They also have four corners and four sides. Let's count. One, two, three, four. The difference is that rectangles have two sides that are longer and two sides that are shorter. If it's a square, all the sides are going to look the same. The other special thing about rectangles are that sometimes they go up and down, or sometimes they can be going sort of side to side. What can you think of that's shaped like a rectangle? I thought of a door or maybe a TV or a computer, or even tall, tall buildings can have a rectangle sort of shape. Can you think of something that is sweet and brown and it usually comes in a rectangle shape? A block of chocolate, my favorite. Do you know the name of this shape? This is an oval. Say hi, oval. Ovals are like circles, only they're sort of long, as if someone smushed a circle. They have no corners or sides. What can you think of that's shaped like an oval? Here's some things I thought of. Face can be an oval shape. Some mirrors are shaped like ovals, or maybe even a racetrack. What food is shaped like an oval? I'll give you a hint. It could be laid by a chicken. An oval shaped egg, perfect for breakfast. Okay, last shape. Do you know the name of this shape? This is a tricky one. Its name is hexagon. Say hi, hexagon. Hexagons are special because they have many corners and sides. Let's count to see how many corners and sides a hexagon has. One, two, three, four, five, six. A hexagon has six corners and sides. Can you think of something that's shaped like a hexagon? Some tools are shaped like hexagons. This playground structure is shaped like a hexagon. Sometimes you might find hexagon patterns in the ceilings, walls or floors in rooms and buildings around you. Can you think of something that looks like this and is made by honeybees? Hexagon-shaped honeycomb. 
Those are the little cells that bees deposit honey into. Sweet. So now that we know a little bit more about shapes, we're going to think about how shapes can work together to make new and exciting shapes. Here's a shape, it's a square. Here's another shape, a triangle. When I put the two together, it started to look like something a little bit different. What happens if I add a rectangle? Or maybe a circle on the rectangle? Look, I made a house just by using some very simple shapes. Here's another one. Here's a hexagon. I can add a triangle. I could add a circle, maybe some diamonds. And look, even a heart. I've got a new shape now. It's a fish. Okay, you've been sitting for a while, so let's stand up next to where we were sitting and make sure you have room to move your arms. We're gonna do a whole body workout by making shapes in the space around us. Are you ready? Let's start by making huge circles. Go ahead and get your magic writing finger out and you're going to stretch up as high as you can go, maybe even up on your tippy toes. And we're gonna make a huge circle. We're gonna curve around to the wall, point to your wall, curve all the way down. You can even get down low enough to touch the floor, come back up the other side, point to the other wall, and back up to the ceiling to finish your circle. Let's try another one. We're gonna make a medium sized circle. Let's use the other arm. Start pointing up, curve, point to the one wall, bend down low, scoop up the other side, come back around and stop at the top. Fantastic. All right, this time we're going to make squares and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to take some square breaths. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start up at one top corner, pointing up, and you're going to draw a little line across, little line down, little line across, line back up to where you started. Let's try again. This time we're going to do big lines to make our square. Ready? Let's practice. Big line across and you're gonna breathe in. Breathe out for your line down. Breathe in for your line across. And out for your line up. Let's try a medium sized square with using your other arm. Ready? Across, down, over, up. Square, great. How small can you make a square? Looks good. Remember this shape? It's a triangle. Three sides and three corners. And even the word triangle has three parts. Tri-angle. So we're gonna say the word triangle as we draw the, these triangles. We're gonna start up at the top, and we're gonna slide down one angle and say tri. Tri. Ang. Goal. Let's try it bigger, ready? Reach way up in the sky. Try and goal. Looking good. Now remember, if there's three sides and three corners, even if it's upside down, it's still a triangle. So let's practice making some that way. We're gonna go across the top. Try, slide down the slide, and and then go back up the other side. Goal. Let's make a small triangle. Try and go. Okay, our last whole body shape is going to be rectangles. And we're gonna do two different kinds. Let's start with the kind of rectangle that looks like it's sort of laying down on its side. We're going to count each side as we draw it. Let's get your magic writing finger out. I want you to cross over your body 
and start at the top corner and we're going to do a long line across. We're going to count one, we're going to go down, short two, two, long three, three, and up, what's the next number? Four. Great work. Now let's try a rectangle that goes up and down. Are you with me? Point up, and you're gonna start by pulling a long line down. Ready? One, across the floor, two. Back up the other side, three, four. Nice work. All right, are you ready for a brain workout? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a picture. And first, I want you to just carefully look all around the picture. I'm going to give you some quiet time just to think about what you see. Last, I'm gonna ask you some questions and I'm gonna ask you to share your thinking with someone else. It could be a grown up, a friend, or even a stuffed animal. If you don't have anyone to share your thinking with, pause the video, go find someone, come back with them, and then press play. I'd like you to take a quiet minute, no talking, just looking and thinking about this picture today. Look all around. Now it's your turn to share your thinking. Tell someone next to you, what is going on in this picture? What activities are happening? What are the people in this picture doing? that makes you say that's what they're doing. Do you see any shapes in this picture? What are the names of some of the shapes that you recognize? What colors do you see? Thank you for taking time with me today to carefully look at this art and to share your thinking with others. Let's play a game. I'm going to teach you how to play I Spy. You maybe already know how to play this game. You can play it now or later. You can play it inside or outside. It's fun to do wherever you are, and it's a great way to practice the names of your shapes. I'll start. I'm going to tell you a shape, and I'm going to ask you to look all around and try to find something that is shaped like that. Ready? I spy something that is shaped like a circle. Look around. What do you see that's shaped like a circle? Let's try another one. I spy something that is shaped like a rectangle. I'm guessing you can find lots of rectangles. Challenge yourself to find three rectangles. Great job. I spy something that is shaped like a square. Can you find something that's shaped like a square?
Are you ready for a challenge? This one might be hard. I spy something that is shaped like a triangle. Look around. Do you see anything shaped like a triangle? Here are just some ideas for you to try later, just to help you keep those names of shapes in the front of your mind. You can make a shape collage. You'll need scissors, glue, and paper. And with a grown-up's help, you can practice cutting out shapes and putting them together to make new shapes. Another thing you might wanna try, the next time you're out in your neighborhood, you're in your car, or you're going on a walk, try to call out some of the names of the shapes that you see. It's a great and fun way to practice your shapes. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me and I hope you learned something new. You're one step closer to kindergarten. The Step Up series has been brought to you by the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture in Spokane, Washington. Check out our website at www.northwestmuseum.org sponsored by STCU.